Astronomy GCSE Topic 11 Telescopes. What do we need to know about telescopes? Well, we can see an awful lot more with a telescope than we can with the naked eye. Uh, why? Because a couple of reasons. A telescope has a much larger aperture. The aperture is basically the hole that the light comes through. And without the telescope, you're talking about the pupil of your eye, which isn't very big compared to uh, the aperture of a decent sized telescope. Also, our, our eyes have limited sensitivity to light, especially when it's dark. On your retina, there's things called rods and cones, and only the rods work at low light levels. So our eyes aren't very sensitive in low light intensities. So we need to collect as much light as possible and then we can see very dim far away objects. Now who invented the telescope? Well there was a guy called Hans Lippersche who was a, a Dutch eyeglass maker and he applied for a patent. There is some debate as to who invented it but he was certainly the first person to apply for a patent for a telescope. Apparently he saw two youngsters playing with lenses and making things look bigger by putting these two lenses in front of each other. Um, the first person to make a significant contribution to astronomy was Galileo. And in 1609, Galileo made his own telescope, which had a magnification of 20 times. And with it, he made lots and lots of discoveries. Uh, he saw mountains and craters on the moon in a lot of detail. The moons of Jupiter, rings of Saturn, sunspots, lots and lots of other stuff with his telescope. I'll mention now uh, one of the things he discovered. He looked at the moons of Jupiter. He saw that there were these objects which clearly were in orbit around Jupiter. Uh, and that was very, very strong evidence for the Copernican model. In other words, not everything goes around the sun. You know, moons go around Jupiter. Perhaps the, our moon goes around the Earth. Back to telescopes, though. Now, there's two types of telescope. There are refracting telescopes, which have got lenses in, and there are reflecting telescopes, which have got mirrors in. So refracting and reflecting. And a simple refracting telescope has got two lenses. There's a big one and a little one. And the big one is called the objective lens. And the one that you look in, the little one, is the eyepiece lens. And the objective lens produces an image and then the eyepiece lens magnifies that image. Um, and in a reflecting telescope, there isn't an objective lens, it's a mirror. There's an objective mirror, a large mirror, a curved mirror. But refracting telescopes, um, we need to know that there's two types. There's a Keplerian, named after Kepler, and a Galilean, named after Galileo. And you won't be asked to draw um, detailed ray diagrams of these but you may have to recognize them. And if you look at them, can you see what the, the big differences between them are? The, the biggest difference is that the Galilean telescope, the eyepiece lens is concave, whereas with the Keplerian telescope, the eyepiece lens is convex. So the Galilean telescope uses a, a concave lens for the eyepiece. Um, other differences, uh, the image is upright with a Keplerian telescope. The, everything looks upside down, but it doesn't with a Galilean telescope. The image is upright. And also, for the same magnification, uh, it doesn't have to be as long. You can have a shorter tube. The two lenses can be closer together. There are advantages of the Keplerian. Uh, one of them is that it has a larger field of view. And that can be an advantage, and we'll talk about field of view later. There are two types of reflecting telescopes. There's a, a Newtonian, 
which was invented by Isaac Newton, and a cassa grain, which was invented by some French bloke called cassé grain or something like that. Okay, uh, and again, look at the diagrams. Can you see the the, the big differences between them? And it, basically, the the cassa grain telescope, there's a there's a hole in the objective mirror. Uh, and it uses a, another convex mirror, another curved mirror. Okay, there are advantages to this. Uh, again, a, a shorter tube for the same magnification, but it is a, a more complicated design than the Newtonian. The Newtonian is simpler. Students often ask me if they're thinking about buying a telescope, what kind of telescope, and they see that these reflecting telescopes give amazing magnifications compared to the refracting ones. If you are a beginner and if you're going to have a telescope that you're going to chuck in the boot of the car and go to the countryside and look at things, my advice would be to buy a refracting telescope. The reflecting telescopes, it's so easy for the mirror to get knocked out of place and if it just gets knocked out of place by a, you know a millimeter then you're going to have to get it fixed because you'll get rubbish images. The refracting, refracting telescopes are a lot sturdier. Uh, if the telescope is going to stay in the same place all of the time, then fair enough, get a reflector. Otherwise, uh, a refractor is better, I think. Now, there are advantages of reflecting telescopes. Um, it's much easier to make a big mirror than it is to make a big lens. If we're talking about the, the biggest telescopes in the world, you know, and these have a, uh, an objective element which is like several meters big, it's, you can't make a, a lens that big, but you can make a mirror that big. Uh, a large mirror can have a very large aperture, so you're collecting lots of light. A large mirror can have a very large focal length and also what you can do is put several mirrors together to make an even bigger mirror. Um, if the, the diagram on the right there, that's the James Webb Telescope, which is gonna be launched pretty soon. And that's made up of uh, lots of different mirrors. It's segmented, lots of different mirrors. And each one can be adjusted slightly to a hundredth of a millimeter to make sure that the image is perfect. Another problem you can get with refracting telescopes is something called chromatic aberration. And you don't get these with reflecting telescopes. Chromatic aberration is basically kind of fuzzy, rainbowy stuff around your images. And it's caused when the lens is acting a bit like if you put white light through a prism, you get a rainbow. And that's because different wavelengths of light are refracted by different amounts. And this is a problem with refracting telescopes, but not with uh, reflecting ones. Uh, with refract reflecting ones, there is a problem called um, spherical aberration, but that isn't on our syllabus. Now, talking about telescopes, there are three terms which you need to know. Magnification, resolution and field of view. Uh, let's talk about each of these. Magnification, what does that mean? Well, magnification is how many times bigger the image is. There's a, a bloke on a hill and we look through a telescope. Oh, look, it's bigger. It's five times bigger, so the magnification is five. Five times. We can work out the magnification of a telescope using this equation, which is on your formula sheet. You'll get a formula sheet in the exam and it's the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece and that will tell you the magnification. Here's a, an example of a sum you might be asked to do. The objective lens of a refracting telescope has a focal length of 50 centimetres and its eyepiece has a focal length of 5 centimetres. Calculate its magnification and using the equation I just gave you, the answer is, okay, so FO over FE, 50 over 5 is 10, magnification of 10. 
coming back to the two types of refracting refracting telescope for a minute um, with the Galilean telescope we can use an objective lens with a longer focal length in the same size tube now why is that an advantage well basically the longer the focal length of the objective then the bigger the magnification will be if you look at the formula above Resolution. What does resolution mean? Now, here are two Hubble pictures of uh, the M100 galaxy, and the resolution is better uh, the one on the right. We can see a lot more detail. We can see a lot more of the tiny little stars much more clearly. There's more separation between them. Resolution, it's the ability of an optical instrument to distinguish between two points of light. If your resolution is good, you'll see two distinct little points of light. If it's poor, then they will blur into one. So good resolution means lots of detail, lots and lots of tiny little stars you can see. Now, resolution depends on two things. It depends on the size of the aperture, which is basically the diameter of the objective. Uh, and the larger the aperture, the better your resolution will be, okay? The bigger the aperture of the telescope, the more tiny, tiny little stars you'll be able to see with it. And the other thing it depends on is the wavelength that you are observing in. And the larger the wavelength, the poorer the resolution, okay? If you're looking at radio waves, then your resolution will be rubbish, because radio waves have a very, very big wavelength. Look at this question. Radio telescopes are often used to observe large-scale structures, big things, such as galaxies. Why do radio telescopes need to be so big? And there's two reasons. One reason is that these galaxies are very, very far away, so we're not going to get very much radiation in other words radio waves reaching us on earth so we need a very very large dish which will collect as much radiation as possible as much radio waves as possible uh, and then the other reason i mentioned earlier is that radio waves have a very big wavelength so unless you have a very large aperture then your resolution won't be very good so having a large aperture having a very very big dish will improve the resolution. One thing you can do with radio telescopes is you can link them together. You can have lots of radio telescopes looking at the same thing. Um, there's a, a telescope in New Mexico called the Very Large Array, which does that. Uh, also, another reason you should have a large aperture, the, the larger the aperture, in other words, the bigger the hole at the end of the telescope, the more light comes in, and so you'll be able to see objects which are fainter, uh, in other words, ones which are further and further away. And the amount of light entering the telescope is proportional to the diameter of the aperture squared. Okay, why is it proportional to the diameter squared? Well, if you think that the area of a circle is pi r squared, so if the radius is twice as big, then the area, which is where the light comes in, the area of the aperture will be four times bigger. This uh, picture is of the TMT, the 30 meter telescope, which apparently will be finished in 2025 in Hawaii. Uh, and that has a 30 meter aperture, a very, very big telescope, that one. Okay, before we talk about field of view, something very useful. If you hold out a hand at arm's length and you spread your fingers, then the angle that that makes in the sky is about 15 degrees. Uh, and the angle that one finger makes is about one degree. Uh, and this is useful because when we talk about how objects appear in the sky and what kind of angle they take up in the sky, then it's a useful way of thinking about it. If I was to say to you that if you look at the moon and the sun in the sky, 
then they take up about half a finger. Yeah, you can cover them up with one finger. Uh, and that's because the angle that they appear in the sky, the angle they subtend is about half a degree, which is about 30 arc minutes. There are 60 arc minutes in a degree. And when we talk about field of view, the field of view of a telescope is measured in degrees or arc minutes. And it's basically how much of the sky, as in the angle, we can see through our telescope. Two pictures of the moon here. The one on the left, we can see all of the moon. The one on the right, we're just looking at Tycho. And I know it's not a very big picture, but the point is that the field of view is much bigger on the, the one on the left, the image on the left. Uh, if you're an astronomer out in your garden having a look at stuff, you'll have a selection of eyepieces. If you want to see all of the moon, or if you're looking at kind of a, a let's say, part of a constellation, then you might want a larger field of view. If you really, really want to look close at something, then you choose an eyepiece which has a smaller focal length, and that will give you a bigger magnification and a smaller field of view.